Hello right here. This is an interim video between the last comment response video I made and the next one that I intend to make while I'm waiting on some new audio equipment to arrive. While in town picking up some items on hold and having some time to kill, I was able to swing by an open house demo of glass blowing by local artists Scott Graham and his wife Christina. And I thought I'd share that with you. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comment section below. And I'm sure I can provide more of it as there's a lot of local artists and craftspersons up here. That's it for now for me. Hope you enjoy. I'm Scott Graham. I'm gonna... But yeah, I'm gonna do a little demo in a sec right now. Um, I'm gonna be making a piece of garden art and actually glue that on copper. So I have to cut the copper. I have to drill out the copper and then I get to blow some glass. So it's a little bit more of a process than just gathering up some glass. But this is my process. So you're just putting a hole in one side of those? Yep, a hole in one side. Make that bigger in a second, and then I'll show you why. That's the first hole. I found over time that if you try and drill a big hole, it doesn't work so well. So you get a small hole, and then you have to make it bigger. That makes sense. It does make sense, but it's just more effort, which is always frustrating. <laughs> Especially when you just want to blow glass. <laughs> What sort of saw are you using to cut those or grind them? Uh, just a metal chop saw. Oh, okay. So basically I have this guy that fits in there. I have a little hole. This guy fits right into the hole. And once that's in there, the copper doesn't leave. It sticks right in. Awesome. So now I get to those glass. So do you ever uh, put in your own additives? Uh, no, I have before, but you actually need a separate uh, furnace for that. So back in the day, most glass blowers would have melted their own color. They would have one tank of clear, or maybe one of blue and one of white. And those would all be pretty small, um, so didn't have that many options. So now, some people still melt their own colors, but most people just buy colors from uh, Germany and uh, New Zealand. Uh, also, the colors are made using uh, a lot of heavy metals, so it's also really toxic, uh, really bad stuff you want to wear. Good ventilation, so the thought of having someone else take care of all that work for you is super. Like cobalt, uranium? Cobalt, um, a lot of these are made with um, yeah, manganese, cobalt, chromium, magnesium, gold, silver, um, all sorts of different stuff. Oh, I wouldn't have uh, expected gold and silver. Yeah, gold and silver, um, and they create some of our nicest colors. Uh, I'm gonna lay this out right now. Uh, pink, this is actually called gold ruby right there, uh, because it's actually made using gold. Only way to get that nice, bright pink color right there. Really? I, I would have thought gold would have shown through as a gold color or something. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, colors it has an additive. So right now I'm just heating up the copper so I can actually get the glass to adhere to this. And so right now I have a little bit of glass. I want to get more glass, so you actually have to let it cool off before you gather more glass on top.
how long do you got before it cools? Yeah. It's sort of all relative. Depends on how much glass you have, what you've done to it. Have you touched it to the steel? Have you just let it sit there by itself? Um, it's all relative, and I can tell just by looking at it and by the way it actually moves. So is the air gun to cool it off quicker or? Yep, to cool it off quicker, correct. More glass on the top. And when you pass, even though you're a couple feet away, I can uh -huh. feel the heat coming off of it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, when we gather it out of that furnace right there, it's up at 2150 degrees. And what did you say this one here was at? Uh, probably around 23 to 2400. So do you have a really good idea of what it's gonna come out looking like, or do you idea. just kinda, okay. Yep. So the torch was just to keep it at temperature until you got it back to the oven? Yep, just heat it with that torch to get some temperature towards the back Is that so you can draw it out more? Uh, so I can stretch the front. I'm uh, going to make one of the pieces of garden art that we have in the front. They look kind of like birds over there. Now that pipe, it, does it ever get too hot to handle or?
is the coupling piece insulating your hands from the heat lower down? No, nothing. Actually, insulating my hands. Just the pipe. It's just hollow, and the uh, heat tends to not travel that far up. And if it does, I can always use my pipe cooler, which I'll show you when I'm done. And then it's right here, here and it's essentially just a fancy little water pump. And is that to cure it or something? Yep, yeah, that's uh, called the annealing of it. And uh, annealing is a process of slowly lowering the temperature of uh, the glass. All right, I'm familiar with it in metal work. I didn't realize that it was applicable to glass totally. bowling. So yeah, they use it in metal um, to harden the metal. Um, so it's annealing, just the process of slowly lowering the temperature. <laughs> and uh, that allows the glass not to crack. If we just let it sit on the ground, it would cool off too fast, the molecules would go head to head, just kind of fitting up like a puzzle. 